Today's daf, daf kuf aleph, is sponsored the Rafua Shalema for Devara Bas Chayarifka. The first Indian that the Gemara discusses is a craftsman who deviated from the customer's request. According to Rabbi Meir, if the customer gave him wood for a chair and he built a bench instead, he pays the customer the value of the wood. He is similar to a thief that acquires the chair through its transformation. According to Rabbi Yehuda, he is entitled only to whichever payment is less, the improvement or the expenses. Rabbi Meir agrees where he did a poor job building a chair, the law is like Rabbi Yehuda because he did not acquire the chair through a shinui, but ruined it on some level. Dye absorbed in wools, in, in wool, is it tangible or intangible? If a thief used stolen dye to dye wool, he, is he liable to return it to the owner? If he stole the raw material, then the thief transformed it into dye, so the most would be his obligation to pay its value. If he stole the liquid dye that the wool absorbed, even if the dye is intangible, since it can only be seen, and we would assume something visible is not material, it's not tangible, here also he has to pay for the dye that he used. On the other hand, even if we say the dye in the wool is extent, how can he return it by washing it out? If he stole both the dye and the wool from the same person, each one claim, each one's claim would cancel the other. The victim must pay him for the improvement. The amount, of course, depends on the owner's intentions with the wool and the robber for the dye. However, even if the absorbed dye is intangible, it is deemed a return stolen object because the wool and dye combine to the value of the theft, unless the price of dyed wool is cheaper than the items separate. Another solution in the Gemara is that he stole the dye and used it to dye the victim's monkey. In this case, there was no improvement. If the dye is intangible, the thief will have to return some other dye. The last solution is a monkey dyed the wool of one with dye of another. The owner of the dye claims his dye in court. If the absorbed dye is intangible, then he has no claim against the owner of the wool. The next thing, Indian that the Gemara discusses is appearance as something tangible in relation to Arla, Shvius, Shmita, Pradus, and Dam, blood. The Gemara explains that even if color is intangible, something that's visible but not, you can't hold it, is intangible. The verse concerning Arla mentions three times the word Arla, one to prohibit even visual benefit. Similarly, in regard to Shmita, the verse says, Yovel hi kodesh chem. The word tiem means it remains as is, even after it is absorbed, it is still prohibited for use. Although there is a Mishnah that says a revius of human blood absorbed in a garment is metame only after washing it out and there still remains a revius, the vessels in the house would be tame. That is no proof that something absorbed is not tangible. In the case of dam tvusa, blood that is uncertain if it emerged before the person died or after, although the Rabbanan are machmir and it is metame, it is only if by washing there still remains a revius of blood.